Conjunctival inflammation Acute conjunctivitis This is an acute self-limited infection of conjunctival surface of less than 3 weeks duration. It is caused by bacteria as Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staphylococcus aureus and Haemophilus influenza. There is hyperemia, chemosis and purulent discharge. Polymorph nuclear leukocytes are present in substantia propria and epithelium. There is also mucopurulent discharge and petechial hemorrhage. Acute conjunctivitis may resolve or may turn into chronic conjunctivitis. It could be complicated by superficial crescentic marginal ulcer or iridocyclitis by pneumococci. Purulent conjunctivitis is an acute severe suppurative form of conjunctivitis with generalized manifestations. It could be purulent conjunctivitis of adults or of thalmia neonatorum. Purulent conjunctivitis. It has an explosive onset few hours to few days. It is caused by gram-negative cocci as Neisseria gonorrhea in 60 to 80 percent of cases, Staphylococci and Streptococci. Gram-positive bacilli include diphtheria. In purulent conjunctivitis, there is massive purulent discharge, severe hyperemia and chemosis, eyelid edema, and true membrane formation. Purulent conjunctivitis may be complicated by corneal ulcerations, where gonococci invade corneal epithelium. Keratitis occur in 15 to 40 percent of cases. There is diffuse epithelial infiltration, marginal infiltrates, and corneal ulcers marginal ulcer, ring ulcer, or central ulcer. Other complications include iridocyclitis, spastic ectropion, and chronicity. Membranous conjunctivitis. This is an acute infective conjunctivitis characterized by true membrane formation. The causative organism is diphtheria bacillus, which is a gram-positive, comma-shaped bacillus. The affected age is 2 to 5 years and membranous conjunctivitis occurs in winter time. True membrane formation results from the following diphtheria, gonococci, beta hemolytic streptococci, and Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Characteristics of the membrane It is formed as a result of toxin diffusion. It is composed of necrotic epithelium, exotoxin, and diphtheria bacilli entangled in fibrin. It is adherent to basement membrane, and peeling results in a row bleeding surface. Local complications result from excessive fibrosis in the eyelid, tracheases, and intropion, in the conjunctiva, symblepharin and xerosis, in the cornea, ulcers, and pseudoterygium. General complications of membranous conjunctivitis result from exotoxin production, which circulates in the bloodstream, causing toxic myocarditis, toxic glomerulonephritis and albuminuria, toxic neuritis. Cranial nerve pulses, the third, fourth and sixth cranial nerve, results in paralytic squint. Parasympathetic nerve palsy results in loss of accommodation. Differential diagnosis. Pseudomembrane formation is associated with viral conjunctivitis caused by herpes simplex virus, adenovirus 8, Epidemic keratoconjunctivitis, adenovirus 3, PCF. Bacterial agents include Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Meningococcus, Pseudomonas, and coliforms. Pseudomembrane formation is also associated with chemical burn, ocular pemphigoid, foreign body, and lineous conjunctivitis. Differences between membranous and pseudomembranous conjunctivitis. Membranous conjunctivitis is caused by diphtheria bacilli. The membrane is composed of necrotic epithelium, fibrin, and bacilli. It is firmly adherent to the basement membrane. Its removal results in a row bleeding surface. While in pseudomembranous conjunctivitis, the cause may be pneumococci organisms, viruses, fungi, caustics, atropine allergy. The membrane is composed of coagulated discharge rich in fibrin. It is loosely adherent to the basement membrane, and its removal results in smooth, glistening surface with no bleeding. Viral conjunctivitis. Papilloma virus leads to conjunctival papilloma, conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasia, or squamous cell carcinoma. 
Human herpes virus type 8 causes Kaposi sarcoma. Adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis. This is a contact infection by adenovirus subgroups inducing simple follicular conjunctivitis that is mild and transient, pharyngeoconjunctival fever caused by serotypes 3 or 7, epidemic keratoconjunctivitis caused by serotypes 8, 19 or 37. This is associated with upper respiratory tract infection and it occurs bilaterally. Epidemic keratoconjunctivitis by serotypes 8, 19 and 37. There is severe follicular conjunctivitis, conjunctival petechial hemorrhage and pseudomembrane formation. The cornea shows multifocal subepithelial infiltrates and large central corneal erosion. Epidemic keratoconjunctivitis could be complicated by subepithelial conjunctival scarring, symblepherin, and dry eyes. Lineous conjunctivitis. This is bilateral chronic fibrinous pseudomembranous conjunctivitis. It begins in childhood, it is recurrent, and heritable mutations in plasminogen with severe deficiency in type 1 plasminogen occurs. The systemic form shows similar lesions in vagina and other mucous membranes. There are yellowish plate-like masses overlying the palpebral conjunctiva. There is massive chronic conjunctivitis is a unilateral or bilateral conjunctivitis persisting for more than four weeks. Types include follicular conjunctivitis and papillary hypertrophy. The follicles in follicular conjunctivitis are gray-white round to oval elevations. A vascular center is present containing immature lymphocytes and macrophages. The periphery contains the more mature lymphocytes and vessels. The overlying epithelium is usually thinned. Papillary hypertrophy. The papillae are more common in inferior tarsal conjunctiva. Papillae are characterized by central vascular tuft, rich vascular stroma with chronic inflammatory cells, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and eosinophils. also granulation tissue. Pale avascular valleys, hyperplastic epithelium thrown into folds, stromal hyperplasia, deep infoldings of epithelium. Chlamydia conjunctivitis. This is chronic conjunctivitis caused by chlamydia trachomatis, characterized by initial epithelial infection followed by subepithelial inflammation with follicle and papillae formation in substantia propria and healing by fibrosis. TRIC agents, trachoma, including conjunctivitis. Gram-negative basophilic organisms, small obligate intracellular parasites with elementary body, initial body, and inclusion bodies. Three species exist, Chlamydia trachomatis, Chlamydia cytasi, and Chlamydia pneumonia. The organism is similar to viruses, being an obligate intracellular organism, with the following differences. Larger in size, 250 microns, contains both DNA and RNA, replicates by binary fission, no long-lasting immunity after infection, responds to antibiotics, sulfa, gym sustain shows basophilic inclusion body. Trachoma is the leading cause of preventable blindness worldwide. It affects more than 400 millions in endemic areas which are Africa, India and Middle East. Nearly all children infected by age 2 in endemic areas. Human acts as a reservoir with infected mucosa of gastrointestinal tract and upper respiratory tract. Trachoma may spread via feces or airborne particles. Classification of trachoma WHO Diagnostic Criteria We must have two. 1. TF Lymph follicles on the upper tarsus, more than and equal 5 in upper tarsal conjunctiva. 2. TI Trachomatous inflammatory intense, pronounced inflammatory thickening of upper tarsal conjunctiva. 3. TS Trachomatous scarring, Arlitz line. 4. TT Trachomatous tracheases. 5. CO corneal opacities. Vascular panus, which is an inflammatory panus destroying the Bowman's membrane.
Limbal follicles, remnants of limbal follicles in late stages, Herbert's pits. Another classification is McCallan's classification in 1908. 1. Conjunctival manifestations. Trachoma is an epitheliotropic organism affecting conjunctival, corneal, and lacrimal system epithelium. It secretes toxins that diffuse into deeper structures resulting in chronic inflammatory reaction, appearing as follicles. Healing occurs by fibrosis. Stage 1. T1 incipient trachoma. Immature follicles in palpebral conjunctiva and fornix. Follicles are more than 1 mm. Flat with the conjunctival surface and not expressible. Follicles are surrounded by dilated capillaries. Stage 2. T2. T2A. Typical florid follicular conjunctivitis with follicular hypertrophy and necrosis. Mature superficial tarsal follicles are present that are raised above conjunctival surface. Increase in size of follicles results in compression of blood vessels, central necrosis and expression of gelatinous material. T2. Limbal keratitis and vascular panus formation. T2b papillary conjunctivitis with no scarring conjunctival epithelial hyperplasia on top of follicles with papillary formation that are fine pink finger-like projections increased weight of the eyelid results in mechanical ptosis velvety appearance of the eyelid is present stage T2b is further subdivided into T2b1 typical papillary trachoma T2b2 T2B1 with spring catar. T2C, T2B1 with chronic gonococcal conjunctivitis. T2V, plasma cell infiltration with hyaline degeneration of papillae, leading to Stelwag brownie edema. Stage 3, T3, cicatrizing stage. Dense fibrosis replaces inflammatory infiltrate. Necrotic follicles involute, leading to white lines of fibrosis. Loss of mucine secreting goblet cells leads to xerophthalmia and scarring of lymphoid follicles. Arlott's line, which is a white line of fibrosis at sulcus subtarsalis, is present. Higher line degeneration. Secretions and desquamated epithelium are retained in between papillae, resulting in post trachomatous degenerations or PTDs and post trachomatous concretions PTCs. Stage 4 inactive trachoma. The inflammation resolves and conjunctival scarring with entropion, tracheases and lag of thalamus occurs. Corneal manifestations of McCallan's classification of trachoma. Corneal follicles. The upper cornea shows Herbert's rosettes which are yellow follicles representing aggregation of inflammatory cells at the end of blood vessels between epithelium and Bowman's membrane. Herbert's pits which are depressed pits due to healing of the rosettes. Trachomatous panis. This is chronic inflammation characterized by superficial vascularization and cellular infiltration of cornea. Stages of trachomatous panis. Progressive stage where there is infiltration followed by vascularization. Regressive stage. Cellular infiltrate regresses, blood vessels do not regress and remain anterior to the cellular infiltrate. Stage 1 T1 incipient trachoma Immature follicles in palpebral conjunctiva and fornix. Follicles are more than 1 mm. Flat with the conjunctival surface and not expressible. Follicles are surrounded by dilated capillaries. Fate of trachomatous panis Complete resolution without sequelae occurs if Bowman's membrane is intact. Healing by fibrosis occurs if Bowman's membrane is destroyed. Keratectasia may occur due to corneal thinning. Trachomatous ulcers. Typical ulcers are linear, horizontal and superficial. They are related to panis on surface or at the edge. Atypical ulcers are produced mechanically by post-trachomatous degenerations and rubbing lashes. In trachoma, the immunohistochemistry is beneficial, and the conjunctival smear shows polymorph nuclear leukocytes, plasma cells, and lymphocytes. 
Epithelial cells are present, containing initial bodies, basophilic intracytoplasmic inclusions of Halber Stiedler and Prowazek by Jim Sustain. Also, there are free elementary bodies. Complications of trachoma. Complications result from scarring of the conjunctiva, eyelids, and cornea. Eyelids complications. Eyelid margin fibrosis leading to mild directed lashes, tracheases, and cicatricial entropion. Multiple chalasia due to meibomian duct fibrosis resulting in mechanical ptosis. Scaphoid deformity, boat shaped deformity of the eyelid. Conjunctival complications. Posterior simbleferin, conjunctival xerosis due to atrophy of goblet cells, obstruction of lacrimal ducts by fibrosis, and Stelwag brownie edema. Corneal complications. Corneal opacities due to ulcer formation followed by scarring and keratectasia. Lacrimal complications. Dacryoadenitis, dacryocystitis, epiphora resulting from lacrimal punctual obstruction, mucosal formation and pyocele formation. Angular conjunctivitis. This is chronic conjunctivitis affecting inner and outer canthi due to infection by Morex axenfeld diplobacilli. The inner and outer canthi show white and foamy angular discharge, maceration, redness of skin and conjunctiva, and marginal corneal ulcers occur. Microscopically there is thin epithelium with absent horny layer and parakeratosis and eyelid edema. The conjunctiva shows increase in goblet cells with diffuse tromal infiltration by polymorph nuclear leukocytes and plasma cells. Organism is seen extracellularly.